the killing chamber in Texas that has killed over 450 people. I gave a talk at Sam Houston State University. It's literally two blocks down the street from the busiest killing chamber in the United States. Close in the world, actually, in terms of a small piece of land where the most killings happen. And here are these kids at Sam Houston University, wonderful young kids. They got a great history department at Sam Houston. Half of them are history majors. And there they are packed into this auditorium. And here I am talking to them and telling them stories to bring them close to a reality that is two blocks away but could be in India. And that is what culture and social class does. It separates us from the reality that's going on right down the street from us. We are living in a cusp of history. Things are changing in our world in a big way. And Alex was right. Alex held up. The growth in the awareness of human rights around the world is what is shutting down the death penalty in country after country. Human rights. Human rights for people who are suspected terrorists. And we have had some of our Supreme Court justices say the most chilling things, like Justice Antonin Scalia in a BBC interview, about what you could do to suspected terrorists to get information from them in order to save your people. And he made no bones about it. And he said you can put drive bamboo under fingernails, you can do waterboard, you can do whatever you need to do to get information to save a city. What happens to human rights when we are afraid? And I have friends who are part of the John Adams Project of the ACLU in New York that are defending the clients in Guantanamo. And one of the things about a military tribunal is it is not admitted as evidence that that confession or whatever information you got was obtained through torture. They block that. You do not know that. So what kind of trial is that? And it's going to keep coming at us because nobody is immune. And we come down to the basics of what makes us a democracy and what makes us a society of human rights. And it is that we gather, that we learn from each other, that we get alternative sources of information other than from the sound bites that are put out over our media. That we keep our ear close to the ground and that we are in the company of people who are not of our socioeconomic class. That we mix, that we don't stay in these hermetically sealed social circles of other people just like us. Churches don't always help. Because when you go to church, you go to church often with people who are just like us. And mixing up the races and making, mixing up the socioeconomic classes so that we meet each other, so that we are not afraid of each other, so we learn from each other. The cultural diversity which we need to be full human beings. Here's the interesting thing I found over 20 years of crisscrossing the United States of America from Maine to Mississippi to California to Oregon to Texas, in and out of Texas. The opera of Dead Man Walking, which is a very powerful opera, because the prologue of the opera of Dead Man Walking opens with the crime. The audience witnesses the murder of an innocent, beautiful couple killed in front of their eyes. And all of the story of the opera unleashes from that act. And they know who did it. They see who did it. And he's not remorseful. And so that part in all of us that says, well, if anybody deserves it, he does. And it's going to bring them through the whole journey. What I have found out about 
about the American people is not that they are wedded to the death penalty at all. A recent poll just came out, 61% of Americans would be satisfied with life without parole. That's been rising. It used to be just barely 50%, then a little bit above 50%. Because people really don't want to have to kill people. Jurors really do not want to have to kill people, each of them having on their conscience the life of this person because it takes a unanimous decision. And if even one of them doesn't vote for death, the person lives so every juror has that person's life in their hands because if they don't vote for death, the person lives. If everybody votes for death, the person dies. And I've been finding out that it's, it's just that people haven't reflected very deeply on it. It's not one of the moral issues that hits most people personally. 